Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. We will be uh, discussing the uh, first part of the uh, criminal justice system. Because um, I divided the uh, discussion of the uh, subject into uh, three parts. The uh, first part, in this first part, we will be uh, discussing the introduction of the criminal justice system and some uh, preliminaries in relation to this uh, uh, subject. The, uh, we will be also discussing the uh, law enforcement pillar and the um, prosecution. Okay, so these are the uh, only topics in uh, part one of the criminal justice system. As I uh, usually tell my uh, students and uh, reviewees in the licensure examination, it is still uh, the best thing to consider this subject as uh, one of the most important subjects that will be dealt with in uh, before taking the uh, licensure examination because uh, this subject uh, discusses or uh, it will serve as an overview of uh, some other subjects like for example um, in criminal law one we will be discussing some uh, uh, things in relation to crimes the definition of crimes and classifications and uh, we will be discussing some uh, portion of uh, juvenile delinquency and uh, correctional administration both the institutional and uh, non-institutional uh, correction so as i repeat you must uh, take this subject seriously either you are uh, reviewers or uh, criminal students who are still taking up the subject criminal justice system uh, to start with the uh, introduction of the uh, subject we all know that uh, if you are going to uh, scan the discussion of our history not only in the uh, philippines but in the international community as a whole uh, we, we have discussed that uh, the first settlers were nomads so uh, the nomads are those persons transferring from uh, one place to another in search of the natural fruit of the land so if they consume the uh, natural fruits i'm talking about the fruits of uh, uh, the fruit bearing trees if they will be consuming those natural fruits in uh, one place then afterwards they will be transferring to another place so uh, that is what we call nomads they transfer from one place to another in search of the natural fruits of the land so uh, there was an author of a criminal justice system who uh, stated that a, a nomad is like a chick boy because uh, both are transferring from one place to another but uh, the purpose is of course different because a uh, nomad is in search of the natural fruits of the land but uh, a uh, chick boy is uh, in search of pleasure so um, <clears throat> these nomads later on uh, learned how to settle in a place what we call community so before settling it is stated in the uh, powerpoint presentation that uh, since they are transferring from one place to another there is no system that is being followed they are being governed by their instincts until such time as i said that they settle in a certain community so um, in settling in that place what we call community uh, we cannot deny that there are some who are hurting another okay so the early forms of settling disputes were uh, organized 
So if you are going to uh, recall your discussion in uh, introduction to criminology, you have uh, discussed some uh, ways how to settle disputes in the ancient uh, or in the medieval ways. Uh, like for example, the, uh, the ordeal of the boiling water, the ordeal of the ant, the ordeal of the wind and others. So those are the uh, early forms of settling disputes. So why is it that the, these early forms of settling disputes were introduced? That is because they believe before that uh, human beings are protected by God, especially the innocent ones. So if uh, a person is charged with a crime and he is uh, an innocent one, then he will be protected by God. He will not be hurt. Like, for example, if he will be performing what we call the ordeal of the boiling water and the like. So um, until such time that we realize that divine intervention or God intervention is not really that effective if it comes to the determination of guilt. So um, there was a, a person by the name of Cesar de Caria who uh, uh, wrote the book entitled Essay of Crimes and Punishment. And uh, he discussed in his book that there must be some government agencies that uh, must be organized in order to detect and punish offenders. So uh, aside from this, if you recall your discussion in introduction to criminology, you have also discussed that uh, Cesar Vicaria introduced the free will theory. Free will theory because uh, according to him, we have the, or, or human beings have the absolute freedom to choose between good and evil. Hence, if that human being chose to do good, he must be rewarded. But uh, if he chose to do evil, then he must be punished. Okay, that is uh, the uh, free will theory or the classical theory introduced by Cesar Vicaria. So, when you will be asked, what is the contribution of uh, Cesar Vicaria in the uh, criminal justice system? So that's it. He introduced the book entitled Essay of Crimes and Punishment. And uh, it, is in, it is stated in this book that there must be some government agencies that must be created or organized in order to detect, try, and punish offenders. And uh, this Essay of Crimes and Punishment became the blueprint or the main basis of the criminal justice system, not only in the Philippines, but in the international community. There are only some modifications, okay? We accepted the teachings of Cesar Vicaria, but there are several modifications. Like for example, in the Philippines, we are maintaining five pillars of the criminal justice system, but in the United States, they are maintaining three pillars only. So I repeat, we adapted the teachings of uh, Cesar Vicaria. It only happened that there are some modifications from one place to another. <clears throat> uh, it was uh, at around uh, 2010. I was still the uh, dean of uh, USST colleges during that time when I wrote a uh, book entitled uh, Criminal Justice System. And uh, I realized that there is, or there are some peculiarities of criminal justice system. So there are some facts unique facts about the criminal justice system. And of course, one of these facts is the criminal justice system remains unsatisfactory 
as long as persons on earth are not perfect. We human beings are not perfect. So it follows that what we are making, it follows that they are not perfect also. So, aman um, sense lang naman yon. So I repeat, because um, we are not perfect, it follows that what we are creating, like the criminal justice system, is not perfect also. There is a contrast between what we are uh, viewing in the movies and what is in the actual life. You know, when you are going to watch a movie involving commission of crime, uh, yes, there, there is a crime committed. Afterwards, the offender will be arrested. Afterwards, the end of the movie. This is because of the common notion that the arrest of the offender is the uh, final stage of the criminal justice system. It is a time wherein the victim will attain justice. That is a common notion. But to tell you, that common notion is not true in the complicated criminal justice system that we have. In the, in the real life, in the criminal justice system, the arrest of the offender is only the first step of the criminal justice system. So the search, in other words, the search of justice is based on perseverance. Wherein the person victimized of the crime, yung na victima ng krimen, ay mabibiktima na naman ng sistema. So he will be suffering loss of money, pag-aalala o anxiety, public humiliation, chatak sisisihin, and the like before attaining justice. And when the offender is arrested and the case is filed in court, to tell you, we really do not know kung kailan o saan matatapos ang kaso na yun. Katulad ng Visconde Massacre. Visconde, uh, there were uh, three members of the Visconde family who were uh, massacred. That was way back 1990 or 1991. And uh, Hubert Webb and others were uh, arrested uh, in the latter part or in the middle part of 1990s. And uh, they were convicted in the uh, regional trial court and uh, perhaps even in the uh, court of appeals. After uh, 15 years of imprisonment, biglang nang bigay ng decision ng Supreme Court. That was uh, 2010 yata. Sabi ng Supreme Court, uh, uh, Hubert Webb and uh, company, uh, you are not guilty of the crime. So uh, it really shook our criminal, uh, it is really shocking in our criminal justice system. Paano naging ganun? Kung totoong hindi sila ang gumawa ng krimen, eh bakit sila nakulong ng 15 years? Kung totoong hindi silang gumawa ng krimen, sino ang gumawa ng krimen? No? So that is really a problem in our criminal justice system. May nagsabi na, okay, then uh, kung may bagong ebidensya, kakasuhan na, na naman natin si na Hubert Webb, eh, punta naman tayo sa technicality ng batas. Sabi ng batas, hindi na pwede. Hindi pwede kasuhan. Ang isang tao, two or three times for the single crime that he had committed. And that is what we call the right against double jeopardy. So let's go to the uh, different terminologies <coughs> in discussing the criminal justice system. Of course, we will be going to the discussion of the criminal first, the first terminology in the subject. So. 
a criminal is a person convicted of a crime by final judgment. So I repeat, a criminal is a person convicted of a crime by final judgment. When we say person, this is the one that is a little bit confusing in discussing this. We all know, especially in the criminal G parlance, that there are two classifications of persons. We have the natural persons, the human beings, and we have the juridical persons. We are in the juridical persons, we are talking about the corporations, partnerships, associations, and the like. May a juridical person become a criminal? To tell you no. The uh, criminal is limited only to natural persons, to human beings. So, uh, he is a person convicted of a crime by final judgment. When will judgment become final? We will be discussing it later. There are several terminologies wherein the term criminal can be compared to. Like, for example, suspect, respondent, accused, convict, ex-convict. When a person was just arrested for the commission of a crime, kahuhuli lang siya, and he is undergoing the necessary process in the law enforcement stage, katulad ng pagpicture, pagkuha ng kanyang uh, fingerprint and others, the designation of that person is suspect. Suspect ang designation o ang tawag sa kanya. Pero kung bata yan, Ang tawag nila sa DSWD. Uh, uy, paano to? Teka lang ha. Medyo nagka-trouble. So, <clears throat> that's it. He is known as uh, if the person who committed the crime is undergoing the uh, process before the uh, DSWD, ang tawag sa kanya ay client. Kung sakaling uh, kakasuan siya sa court, ang tawag sa kanya ay child in conflict with the law. But kung adult yan, ang tawag natin ay accused. Okay. Paano kung ang tao ay kinasuhan na sa prosecutor's office? In other words, ay na-forward na ang kaso sa prosecutor's office. For the prosecutor to conduct in-case proceeding and uh, or preliminary investigation, ang uh, tawag sa kanya, eh, ang tawag sa taong yan is respondent. Ang designation niya ay respondent. Kung kinasuhan na siya ng criminal case sa court, ang tawag sa kanya ay accused. Kung siya ay makonvict, by final judgment, ang tawag sa kanya ay convict. Kung napagsilbihan na niya ang kanyang term at palalayain, babalik na siya sa community, ang tawag sa kanya ay ex-convict or former convict. So, these are the distinctions of these different terminologies. So, to cut the story short, perhaps ang magkapare uh, parehas dito, those with the same definition is are the uh, terms the terms criminal and convict <clears throat> they have the same definition but we cannot deny however that in ordinary communication the term criminal can be used anytime anywhere no kung nag-away nga ang mga parents niyo ang tawag ng mother ng mother mo sa inyong father ay criminal Ba? Mas lalo kong nag-away ang mag-boyfriend, mag-girlfriend. Ang tawag ng babae sa lalaki o yung lalaki sa babae ay criminal. So, uh, in discussing this subject <clears throat> or in discussing the term accused, don't you know that accused is a unique terminology? It is a very unique terminology because 
it is a term that can be used as a noun and as a verb. Kaya kung kayo ay tanungin, how can the term accused be used as a noun and as a verb? Napakadali lang naman yan. Okay, as a noun, go back in this discussion. The term accused is a person charged with a criminal case before the court. Accused ang kanyang designation. But if we will <coughs> be using the term accused <coughs> as a uh, verb, we are referring to the past tense of the verb accused. And accused means to sue. In Tagalog, kakasuhan. No? So, it is a unique term. It can be used as a noun and as a verb. Let's go to the definition of crime. Crime is an act or omission punishable by law, forbidding or commanding it. There are some crimes that are being fulfilled because ano ang ginawa ng akusado? Ginawa niyang isang act that is forbidden by law. Sabi ng ating batas, wag mong gawin yan. It is forbidden by law. But still, he committed it. Like for example, murder, homicide. Sabi ng ating batas, under Articles uh, 248 and 249 of the Revised Penal Code, oh, wag kang pumatay ng tao. But still, pumatay ka. So that is an act. And that act is forbidden by law. So that is a crime. But there are some omissions. For in the law, sasabihin ng ating batas, gawin mo. Pero hindi mo ginawa. Okay? So, that is also a crime. Like for example, in the crime of uh, misprision of prison, sabi ng ating batas, kayo mga Filipino citizens, kung alam ninyo na may ibang tao dyan na gumagawa ng treason, uh, conspiring to commit treason, ipagbigay alam ninyo sa proper authorities, sa mayor, sa governor, sa fiscal. Ipagbigay, ipagbigay alam niyo yun. So, kung hindi mo ginawa yun, then that is a crime. Because you omitted an act that is commanded by law for you to perform. There are several classifications of crime. So, napakadaming ways how to classify crimes. To tell you, hindi pa kompleto ito. Okay? Hindi pa kompleto ito. Uh, perhaps we will be discussing the uh, little bit complete this uh, classifications of crime when we will be uh, when we will be discussing the subject criminal law one. So the first way how to classify crime is according to the law punishing it. So according to the law punishing it. Crime can be classified into three. We have the felony, which is an act or omission punishable by uh, the revised penal code. We have the offense, which is the act or omission punishable by special laws. And we have the violation or obstruction of ordinances, the acts or omissions punishable by ordinances. In ordinary communication, however, the terms felony and offense and crimes are being used interchangeably. Pwede pagpalitin ang tatlong yan. Technicality lang naman sila nagka, uh, nagkakaiba. But in ordinary communication, uh, they can be used interchangeably. Itong crimes, felonies, and offenses. The classification of crime according to the presence or absence of intent. May tinatawag tayo na intentional crimes and culpable crimes. 
Paano tayo nagkaroon ng intentional and culpable crimes? Under uh, Article 3 ng ating Revised Penal Code kasi, nakalagay doon na felonies are committed not only by means of dolo or deceit, but also by means of culpa. So when we say deceit or intentional crime, there is deceit or intentional crime when an act was committed by with deliberate intent. Talagang sinadya na gawin ang krimen. And there is fault when the wrongful act was committed by means of negligence, imprudence, lack of foresight, or lack of skill. Kaya kung sinadya na gawin ang krimen, intentional crime. Pero kung hindi sinadya yun, it is a product of negligence, imprudence, lack of foresight, or lack of skill, then that is culpable crimes. <clears throat> so, uh, classification of crimes according to gravity. Kung gaano naman kalala. No? So, may tinatawag tayo na less grave, uh, ay grave, less grave, and light. When we say less grave felonies, ito yung tinatawag natin na punishable by capital punishment or death penalty and afflictive penalties. So inulit ko, ah, itong grave ay punishable by uh, capital uh, penalties and uh, afflictive penalties. Baka ang tanong nyo sa akin, Sir, ano bang ibig sabihin ng afflictive? Uh, do not worry, we will be discussing that in your subject criminal law 1. Kung uh, kailan ba maging afflictive, correctional, or light ang isang penalty. So, ang less grave naman ay kung punishable siya ng correctional penalty. At light felony, kung punishable siya ng light penalty. No? So, as I told you, we will be discussing kung anong ibig sabihin ng light, correctional, afflictive later on in your subject criminal law 1. So, the classification of crime according to the nature of that of that crime or to the impact to the society so di ko alam, eh, different authors classify it in uh, different ways okay or state it in other ways may sinasabi na definition of crimes according to the nature may nagsasabi naman na definition of crimes according to the impact to the society so we are dealing only with the crimes mala inse and mala prohibita. So, when we say crimes mala inse, ito yung mga krimen na kahit na kung common sense ang gagamitin natin. Alam natin na krimen yan, bad yan. So, by the nature of this crime, the, uh, ito yung tinatawag natin na uh, there is condemnation from the members of the society. Sasabihin ng members ng society na krimen yan, hindi dapat gawin yan. Like for example, homicide murder. Ito namang mala prohibita, they are not evil by their nature. Hindi naman talaga sila masama na gawain. It only happened, sabi ng ating batas, bawal yan for an orderly regulation. So katulad ng illegal possession of firearms. Ang illegal possession of firearms, hindi naman masama yan by its nature. Kasi baka mamaya yung firearms ay ginagamit mo sa hunting, but the problem, walang lisensya. E sabi ng ating batas, dapat kung may firearm ka, it must be licensed. No? So that is an example of crime, mala, prohibita. <clears throat> According to the presence or absence of attempted and frustrated stage. Ganito kasi yun. Tatlong stages ng ating crime. We have the attempted, we have the frustrated, and we have the consummated. And that will be discussed in full. Kung sakaling, uh, if we will be discussing criminal law 1. So, I repeat, we have the attempted, tapos frustrated, tapos consummated. May mga crimes na kompleto yun. Kompleto ang attempted, 
tapos may frustrated, tapos may consummated. Kompleto yon. Katulad ng homicide. May attempted homicide, may frustrated homicide, at may uh, consummated homicide. Material crimes ang tawag natin doon. Kung kompleto ang tatlong stages. Pero may mga crimes na hindi kompleto ang stages. Ito yung tinatawag natin na these are the crimes that are consummated at an instant. Agad-agad ay consummated siya. Like for example, islander. Pinahiya mo ang isang tao. Walang attempted yun. Walang frustrated yun. Agad-agad ay consummated yun. At ang tawag natin doon ay formal crimes. So I repeat, yung formal crimes, these are the crimes that are consummated at an instant. Wala siyang attempted, wala siyang frustrated, agad-agad consummated siya. Katulad ng slander or libel, pinahiya mong isang tao. Okay, <clears throat> di ko alam kung bakit napadpad dito yung instances when judgment of conviction become final. Now, so, uh, these are some, kasi may iba pa ba naman, may iba pang, but ito lang ang sikat na instances when judgment of conviction becomes final. So, first is, after the lapse of the 15-day period to appeal, kung na-convict kasi ang isang tao, binibigyan siya ng 15 days na mag-file ng appeal o, o, o appeal within 15 days. Kung hindi siya nag-appeal uh, uh, within 15-day period, then the judgment of conviction becomes final. Next is, when the accused waives his right to appeal, okay, we will be discussing that later. And next is, when the accused applies for probation. Uh, in your subject, non-institutional correction, you will be discussing that if a person is convicted of a crime, he has either, uh, he has one of the two remedies. Pipili siya sa dalawang remedies. So I repeat, ah, kung na-convict ang isang akusado, mamimili siya sa two remedies. Isa sa Isa doon. First, he is going to appeal. Or second, he is going to apply for probation. Kung nag-apply siya ng probation, the judgment of conviction becomes final. Because the rule is, if a person appeals, he can no longer apply for probation. If he applies for probation, he can no longer appeal. So, you may ask, that is a general rule. According to the general rule, if a person applies for probation, he can no longer appeal. If he appeals, he can no longer apply for probation. Is there an instance wherein a person already appealed and he is allowed by law to apply for probation? To tell you, yes, there is only one exemption. And that is in case of a minor offender under Republic Act 9344. Under Republic Act 9344, which is a Juvenile Justice and Welfare Act of uh, 2006, when a uh, when the person convicted of a crime is minor, he can apply for probation anytime. Kaya kahit na kung nag-appeal siya, pwede niyang withdraw ang kanyang appeal at mag-apply siya ng probation. Next is, when the case is decided with finality by the Supreme Court at close ng kanyang motion for reconsideration, this is because of common sense. We all know that the highest court of the land is the Supreme Court. So, uh, if you already appealed, if you already convicted that person, eh, sana mag-appeal ang tao na yan. Oh? There is no other higher courts wherein he is going to appeal. So, in letter B, nakalagay doon na when will judgment of conviction become final? When the accused <clears throat> waives his right to appeal. So, waive means to renounce. 
Baka ang tanong nyo sa akin, ikaw naman sir, sa dami ng terminology, wave pa, pwede mo na explain This is because the term wave in the criminology parlance is very important. When you took the subject Leia 1, Law Enforcement uh, Administration 1, na-discuss ninyo na there are some qualifications uh, to enter the PNP that can be waived and there are some that cannot be waived. Ibig sabihin, may mga qualifications na pwedeng baliwalain at may qualifications na hindi pwedeng baliwalain. At yung qualifications na pwedeng baliwalain ay uh, ano yung acronym yun? Uh, yung, uh, we have the uh, uh, height, age, weight, educational qualification. Diba? So, uh, theoretically, Education, educational qualification can be waived. That is clearly provided under Republic Act 8551. But to tell you at present, it is no longer waivable. Kasi napakadaming nakapagtapos no? now for your course. Let's go to the term justice. There are two ways how to understand the word justice. First, it is an act of rendering what are due, and second, treating persons equally. In Tagalog, I binibigay kung ano ang dapat, and uh, treating persons equally is uh, ratuhin ang mga tao ng pantay-pantay. <clears throat> Ibig bang sabihin nito ay, lahat ng mga tao ay dapat equal ang kanilang treatment? To tell you no, eh, hindi naman yan ang ibig natin sabihin. Equal ang treatment sa mga tao if they fall in the same classification. Kung nasa isang classification lang sila. Kaya yung nasa bilangguan, hindi nila pwedeng sabihin na unfair naman ang buhay namin. Yung nasa labas, pwede silang kumain sa McDonald's at Jollibee. Samantalang kami na nakakulong ay bawal kumain sa McDonald's and Jollibee. Ay pwede bang, pwede bang sabihin ng nasa bilangguan na unfair and that is injustice to tell you no. That is because they fall in a different classification. Sila ay bilanggo, tayo ay free man. No? So we cannot enjoy the same rights. Why? Because we have different classification. So, ang pinakasikat na kaso, in order to explain this uh, <clears throat> equal protection of uh, equal protection clause of the Constitution, is the people of the Philippines versus Judge Jose Vera. And uh, do not worry if you because if you will be taking up your uh, subject non-institutional correction you will be discussing this case very extensively but ang gagawin lang natin yun is pahapyaw lang only to explain kung ano ang ibig sabihin ng equal protection clause of the constitution o yung pagkapantay-pantay ng mga tao si Mariano Kuenjing may isang tao by, by the name of Mariano Kuenjing who was convicted of a crime Kinonviction is isang crime. So, um, sabi niya, okay lang, kung convicted ako, uh, the important thing is I am going to uh, apply for probation. Mag-apply daw siya ng probation kasi ang probation, kung na-approve niyo, hindi ka ikukulong. Pagsisilbihan mo, ang convict ay pagsisilbihan niya ang kanyang uh, term sa community at hindi sa uh, loob ng kulungan. So yun, nag-apply siya ng probation. Sabi ni Judge, uh, Mariano Kuenjing, pasensya na kasi walang probation sa atin. Ang probation law kasi na Act 421, nakalagay doon na uh, ang probation sa isang province ay 
depende yan kung may pondo ang provincial government na pansweldo sa probation officers. Kaya kung sakaling may pondo, edi may probation kasi may probation officers. Pero kung walang pondo, ay eh, pasensya na. Lahat ng nakukonvict dyan ay kailangan na ikulong kasi walang probation. Sabi ni Mariano Poyongjing, edi eh, punta ako sa province kung saan merong probation at dyan ako mag-apply. Sabi naman ng uh, uh, judge, ay pasensya na kasi napakalinaw sa Republic Act 4221 na pwede kang mag-apply doon lang sa province kung saan ka nakonvict. So, sabi ni Mariano Kuenjing, unfair ang uh, Act 4221 na yan. It violates the Equal Protection Clause of the Constitution. Hindi pantay-pantay ang tingin niya sa mga tao. Kasi bakit may province na may probation at may province na walang probation? Sabi ng Supreme Court, yes. The applicability of Act 4221 is not uniform throughout the island. Hindi siya uniform sa buong Pilipinas. Dahil naaayon lang sa kagustuhan ng provincial board kung i-adapt nila ang probation o hindi. Dahil dito, ang Act for Tutuan ay na-declare na hindi naaayon sa sariyang batas. Let's go to system. System is the combination of related elements organized into a complex whole. So, uh, in other words, it is a process to be followed. In everything that we are doing, there is a process that must be followed, isn't it? Katulad ng pag-enroll ninyo. No? Pag-enroll ninyo sa, uh, especially that we are uh, governed by online uh, classes or review. Kung nag, uh, on, if you are going to enroll in the online uh, review, then uh, there is a specific process that must be followed. And that is the same with enrolling in your uh, respective schools. No? So, what is now the definition of the criminal justice system? There are two ways how to define criminal justice system. First, it is the machinery which the society uses in the prevention and control of crime. That is the first definition. And the second definition is the totality of the activities of law enforcement, prosecution, court, correction, and community in crime control. So there are two ways how to define it. But to tell you, class, uh, in my humble opinion, itong mas mahabang definition ang luma na definition. Ito ang luma na definition. Ito ang bagong definition. It is a machinery which the society uses in the prevention and control of crime. Bakit? Kasi ito, linilimit niya sa five pillars of the criminal justice system. To tell you, our criminal justice system is not limited to the operation of the uh, five pillars of the criminal justice system criminal justice system only because there are several ways how to attain justice maliban sa five pillars ng criminal justice system. Nandyan yung katarungan pang barangay law, nandyan yung juvenile justice uh, system under Republic Act 9344, tapos nandyan yung restorative justice system, at nandyan yung criminal justice system Uh, of cultural communities. So, hindi lang uh, uh, limited ang criminal justice system sa kanyang pillars. There are several other ways how a person attain justice. Okay? And the pillars of the criminal justice system is only one of them. Ano-ano na itong mga pillars ng criminal justice system? We have five. We have the law enforcement 
or police. We have the uh, prosecution. We have the uh, court and correction and community. So we will be discussing them one by one. As I told you a while back, the uh, concentration of part one is law enforcement and prosecution. In part two is we will be discussing the court and correction. Uh, that is part two. And part three will be community and other forms of uh, criminal justice system. So let's go to the law enforcement. <clears throat> the simple job or the simplified job of the law enforcement is to conduct arrest, search, seizure, investigation, and others. So ito naman yung, ito naman yung pinakasimple lang, no? Na how to uh, define the job of the law enforcement. Ang prosecution naman, they, their main job is consisted of three. First, to conduct in-case proceedings. What is the purpose of in-case proceeding? To determine the uh, validity of the arrest. And next is to conduct preliminary investigation. What is the purpose of preliminary investigation? To determine the existence of uh, uh, probable cause. And uh, if there is, if the arrest is valid in after conducting in-case proceeding, or if there uh, is a probable cause after conducting preliminary investigation, the third job or function of the prosecution is to file the necessary information in court. Isa sampanya ang kaso sa court. The court is conducting trial to determine whether the person is guilty or not. Okay, this is a purpose of court or the main function of court. And the correction reforms and rehabilitates offenders. So the correction is consistent of two uh, classifications. We have the institutional, Correction, we are dealing with, uh, in the institutional correction, we are uh, dealing with uh, jails, we are dealing with uh, prisons and colonies. But in non-institutional correction, we are uh, dealing with uh, uh, probation, parole, commutation, uh, amnesty, and others. No? So I repeat, there are two classifications of correction. Community. This community is where the offender came from. Pagkatapos na pagsilbihan niya ang kanyang term, dito na naman siya sa community babalik. So it is consisted of persons, homes, family, government, and others. And uh, the main function of the community is to mold its members and to reintegrate ibabalik o uh, tatanggapin uli yung gumawa ng krimen. So, there are several ways how to enumerate or how to classify police activities. Napakadami dyan. To tell you, if you want to look or to uh, learn the complete activities of the law enforcement, then go to the section, tw uh, section 24 of Republic Act 6975 and go to the uh, law creating 
uh, NBI, that is Republic Act 157, and the law creating PDEA, which is Republic Act 9165. Naka-enumerate doon yung specific functions ng mga agencies na yun. But only for the purpose of simplifying it. Ito lang naman ay for the purpose of simplifying it. So other authors may simplify it in other ways aside from this. No? May tinatawag tayo na prevention of crime. We have the repression or suppression of crime. We have the apprehension of offenders or coolies among offenders, conduct search and seizure, investigation and protection of lives and property. We are going to discuss this one by one. I repeat, uh, these uh, <clears throat> different police activities may be memorized by placing in your mind process. And they are enumerated only for the purpose of simplifying law enforcement activities as much as i am concerned and if i'm not mistaken i base this in the book of manuong and uh, sarmiento or deliso uh, so i adapted it but other authors also simplify the different police activities in other ways. I repeat, it only happened that in my case, we simplified the uh, definition, uh, the uh, classifications of police activities in this manner. So let's go to the explanation of prevention or repression of crime. Before discussing the uh, distinction between prevention or and uh, repression of crime we must first discuss the formula of crime other authors or other faculty also presents the formula of crime in different in different ways but as much as i am concerned this is the way that i am going to explain it no sabi nga nila eh, there are thousands of ways how to kill a chicken so in the for the purpose of teaching there are thousands of ways how to teach a subject matter so kaya pag na huwag niyo sasabihin na bakit yung explanation ng formula of crime ni ganito iba naman Ay, iba sa kanya ang kanyang explanation but as much as i am concerned this is this is how i am going to explain the formula of crime. So, for crime to exist, there are three things uh, that may have a participation. We have the desire o kagustuhan na gumawa ng krimen. And we have the opportunity, pagkakataon o oportunidad uh, na gagawa ng krimen. And we have the resistance. Resistance is the inner pull na wag nang gagawa ng krimen. No? So, uh, I am talking about desire to commit a crime, opportunity to commit a crime, and resistance not to commit a crime. So, if we are going to combine desire and opportunity, at mas malakas ang kanyang kombinasyon kaysa sa resistance, ibig sabihin mas mahinang resistance, then crime will be committed. Pero kung i-combine natin ang kagustuhan at pagkakataon, at mas malakas ang resistance ng isang tao not to commit a crime, then crime will not be committed. So, to cut the story short, there will be a crime kung mas malakas ang desire at opportunity laban sa resistance. Kaya kailangan na bawasan o tanggalin natin ang kagustuhan ng isang tao at pagkakataon ng isang tao na gumawa ng krimen. At kailangan na palakasin natin ang kanyang resistance 
not to commit a crime. So, ang ginagawa ng mga ibang pulis mga kuminsan ay nagkakandak sila ng seminars against criminality. So, uh, binabawasan nilang ating kagustuhan na gumawa ng krimen at tinapalakas ang resistance natin na huwag gumawa ng krimen. Yan ang tinatawag natin na in technical term na prevention of crime. Okay, that is prevention of crime. Ano naman ang repression or suppression of crime? Opportunity naman ang gustong tanggalin ng polisman. Gusto nilang bawasan o gusto nilang tanggalin. So, like for example, in conducting patrol. Kaya kung ikaw pa ba naman gustong-gusto mong pagnakawa ng isang bangko, tapos nakita mo na madaming polisman nakapaligid sa, bang sa bangko na yun, itutuloy mo ba na pagnakawa yun? Of course no, kasi wala kang pagkakataon, wala kang opportunity in order to do it. No? So, ang ginagawa ng polisman in conducting patrol so that there will be no opportunity or lesser opportunity for offenders to commit a crime is known as repression or suppression of crime. So, that's it. That is a formula of crime. So again, there are several ways how to explain this, but uh, as much as I am concerned, this is the way that uh, this formula of crime must be explained. Let's go to arrest. No? Pupunta na tayo sa uh, apprehension of offenders. So, to arrest an offender is the same with to apprehend an offender. In other words, arrest and apprehend are synonymous terms. They are terms of uh, same meaning. <clears throat> arrest is the taking of a person into custody in order that he may be bound to answer for the commission of an offense. In Tagalog, uh, ito yung pagkuha sa kustobiya ng isang tao, ilalagay siya sa kustobiya, para sa ganun ay mapipilitan siyang harapin ang kaso na naisang palaban sa kanya. Because how can you force a person na panagutan ang kanyang krimen uh, na ginawa kung hindi mo siya uhurin. No? So, the general rule, kung kaya ay tanungin, what is a general rule in conducting arrest? The general rule in conducting arrest is every arrest must be done by virtue of uh, uh, every arrest must be done by virtue of uh, a warrant of arrest. Oh, pala, I forgot to discuss uh, something. I forgot to discuss. I'm very sorry about it. In the formula of crime, <clears throat> I, I, I must discuss this because this is the ma main essence of criminology. For us to understand if why is it that we are committing crimes and what are the things that we must do in order to avoid crime commission. No, I'm very sorry. Balikan na lang natin yung Arrest mamaya, no? <clears throat> there was a, a student who asked me, kagustuhan na gumawa ng krimen. Bakit tayo na mga tao, bakit may kagustuhan tayong gumawa ng krimen? Why is it that we have the desire to commit a crime? Kung magtanong ka ng ibang tao, na, ng iba dyan, <clears throat> Ang palagi sinasabi nila ay uh, they committed crime because of poverty. Kahirapan ang dapat nasisihin natin dyan kung bakit sila gumawa ng krimen. But to tell you no, the real root cause of crime is not poverty. Because if the uh, real cause of crime is poverty, then no rich person 
will be committing a crime. Hindi nyo ba alam na ang tunay na, na criminal ay hindi yung mga, hindi yung street criminals committing street, street crimes. They are the persons who are holding positions in the government. Or they are the rich persons. <clears throat> Compare the life of an ordinary criminal, like for example, to a senator. Example lang, ha? senator or, congr or congressman. Ang isang ordinary criminal, kahit sabihin natin, hindi siya nahuli for the last 10 years. So, every day, uh, nagnanakaw siya ng worth 500 pesos. Kaya kung i-compute natin yan, kung everyday ay nagnanakaw siya ng 500 pesos, so, uh, in uh, each in uh, each month is uh, kung 500 pesos, okay, kung 500 uh, pesos times uh, 30 days ay 15,000. Tapos, kung 15,000 per month, tapos times uh, uh, 12, yun 180,000 per year. Times 10, okay, equals times 10, yun din nasa 1.8 million in 10 years. If you'll just imagine that an ordinary criminal nagnakaw siya ng worth 100, ay, worth 1.8 million Pesos, but that is for the span of 10 years. How about a senator or congressman na binigyan ng kickback? Nagnakaw siya in one transaction, isang milyon kaagad or dalawang milyon kaagad. In one transaction. And that may be accomplished for just minutes or hours or days only. So, the crime committed by a senator for just one day is equivalent to the series of crimes committed by an ordinary criminal for a span of 10 years. Who is now the real criminal in this scenario? Is it the senator or is it the ordinary criminal? So to tell you, the real cause of crime is not poverty. Because I repeat, if poverty is the real root cause of crime, then no rich person will be committing a crime. The real root cause of crime is materialism. So I repeat that. Huh? The real root cause of crime is materialism. Tayo kasi ng mga tao, mahilig sa material na bagay. No? Sasabihin natin, ay buti pa si Kwan, may bagong sasakyan. May driver pa. No? May sarili pa siyang driver. Samantalang yung din ng CCGE ng TSU ay walang sasakyan, naglalakad lang siya. No? So this is already the unfairness of life sometimes, no? Because the success of a person is being measured by material things. Kaya tayong mga tao ang hinahabol natin yung mga material na bagay. Kasi feeling natin ay aangat tayo kung nasa atin na ang mga material na bagay na yun. No? So that is with respect to uh, the real root cause of crime. As much as human beings are concerned, no? As much as human beings are concerned. But as much as the Holy Bible is concerned, don't you know that <clears throat> there is another explanation? But almost the same din naman, na ibalang ang terminologies. No? 
In the Holy Bible, persons are committing crimes because of Satan. And Satan is using three weapons against God's people. And these three weapons are consisted of temptation, deception, accusation. So, ang ginagawa daw ni Satan sa atin ay, like for example, temptation. So, sabihin daw ni Satan na, uh, katulad ba ng uh, temptation na uh, ginawa kay Jesus Christ by the devil in the Holy Bible? Sasabihin ng demonyo, ako na kasi ang gawin mong Panginoon. No? At ibibigay ko lahat sa inyo ang mga properties mo. So, ganyan din ang ginagawa ng demonyo sa atin, di ba? Kung may nakita ang cellphone na hindi sa'yo, ang sasabihin daw ng demonyo ay, kunin mo na yan. Kailangan mo yan. Maganda siya, di ba? If temptation does not work, mag-elevate ang uh, si Satan and he will be going to deception. So he is going to deceive. <clears throat> Ibig sabihin ay lilin nangin niya ang mga tao. Sasabihin niya na, kunin mo ang cellphone na yan. Di ba wala kang cellphone? Kailangan mo ang cellphone. Mas lalo ngayon na online. So, kung hindi pa applicable ang deception or deceiving, then Satan now will go to the last weapon. And that is accusation. Sasabihin niya na, ano ka ba naman? Kunin mo na ang cellphone na yan. Huwag kang mag-alala kasi ang owner ng cellphone na yan, magnanakaw din. No? So he's already accusing somebody. So there was, I asked a pastor, because it happened that uh, our associate dean in the CCGE is a pastor. Ang tanong ko sa kanya, uh, Pastor, Associate Dean, kung yan pala ang weapon ni Satan laban sa atin na God's people, paano na natin lalabanan yun? Paano natin lalabanan yun? Yung three weapons of Satan against us. Sabi ng Uh, sabi ng uh, pastor na yun, temptation, deception, accusation cannot be seen. It is not a material thing. Kung material thing lang yan, katulad ng pana, hindi kuha ka ng shield and you are going to use it at hindi ka matatama ng pana na yun. The problem is that is a thing that cannot be seen, that is a thing that cannot be touched. Kaya ang gamitin natin na panlaban ay hindi yung material na bagay. Hindi yung bagay na pwede mong hawakan. E ano na yun? Sabi niya sa akin, you can resist temptation, uh, deception and accusation by means of prayer. No? Kaya kung kayo ay tanungin, uh, for you not to commit a crime, what shall you do? In the side of the Holy Bible or in the teachings of the Holy Bible, just pray. In the other side of being a human being, do not be materialistic. No? Kasi nako, maniwala kayo sa akin, halos lahat ng materialistic na yan, sila ang tinatapon sa bilangguan. How not to become a materialistic person? Eh, makontento ka kung anong meron sa'yo. Diba? Kung ang binigay ng Panginoon sa'yo ay uh, ganyan lang, eh, pagtiisan mo. And you are going to improve it. You are going to develop, to develop it by means of legal means. No? So that's it. We have discussed arrest a while back. Let's go to one of the press. As I told you a while back, 
the general rule is every arrest must be done by virtue of warrant of arrest. So I repeat, every arrest must be done by virtue of warrant of arrest. So the warrant of arrest, ito ang kanyang definition. It is an order in writing issued in the name of the people of the Philippines, signed by the judge, and directed to a peace officer, ang peace officer na ito ay policeman, commanding him to arrest a person or persons stated therein and deliver them before the court. So this is a definition of warrant of arrest. So for a warrant of arrest to be valid, meron siyang requisites, tatlong requisites. At ang tatlong requisites na ito ay naka-enumerate sa Section 2, Article 3 of the Constitution. Diyan naka-enumerate itong three requisites of valid warrant of arrest. First is, it shall be issued upon probable cause. Who will be determining this probable cause? It is a judge. Paano? Eh, mag-conduct siya ng investigation. He, uh, siyang magtanong-tanong sa complainant and the witnesses he may produce under oath or affirmation. And that warrant of arrest must be describing, particularly describing the person to be arrested. So, <clears throat> what is the distinction between oath and affirmation? In Tagalog, panunumpa. But oath is applicable if the person believes in God. Kaya ang huli o dulo ng oath ay, so help me God. Kaya kung meron siyang, so help me God, oath yun. Ibig sabihin, naniniwala ang tao sa Panginoon. Pero kung wala yung, so help me God, affirmation yun. Okay, so that is a different the, the distinction between oath and affirmation. Oath is applicable if the person believes in God and, affirm, and affirmation does not believe in God. What are the instances of warrantless arrest? To tell you, you must memorize and understand these instances of warrantless arrest by heart. Because starting ngayon na criminal justice system, you are going to discuss this. Pagkukunin nyo yung fundamentals of criminal investigation, i-discuss nyo na naman itong instances of foreignless arrest. And uh, if you will be taking up, again, the subject criminal procedure, again, you will be taking or discussing this instances of warrantless arrest. The first instance is when in the presence of the arresting person, the person to be arrested has committed, is actually committing, or is attempting to commit an offense. Ito yung tinatawag natin na implagrante delicto, caught in the act of committing a crime. Nandyan yung huhuli na tao, ang kanyang tao huhuliin ay uh, kasalukuyang ginagawa niya ang krimen, gagawin pa lang niya ang krimen, o katatapos lang niyang ginawa ang krimen. So that is the first instance. The second instance is yung tinatawag natin na uh, based on probable cause. Ito yung paulit-ulit na pinalitan ng Supreme Court. Itong second instance of uh, arresting a person without warrant. So, nakalagay dito na, when an offense has just been committed and the arresting person has probable cause to believe, based on personal knowledge of facts and circumstances, that the person to be arrested committed it. Napaka-complicated ang explanation nito. 
mas lalo kong i-discuss natin yung history. And uh, the important thing that you must have, that you must do at present is just memorize it. And in your subject, Fundamentals of Criminal Investigation and uh, Criminal Procedure, you are going to discuss the history of this second instance. The important thing is, nandyan yung tao na uh, na <clears throat> na huhuli sa isang, na, na, sa isang tao na gumawa ng krimen, hindi niya personal na nakita na ang kanyang huhuliin ay siya ang gumawa ng krimen in contrast sa instance number one. Kasi sa instance number one ay kitang-kita niya na siya ang gumawa ng krimen. Sa instance number two, hindi niya nakita. Pero may sapat siyang basihan na ang taong kanyang huhuliin ay siya ang gumawa sa krimen what, which has just been committed. The third instance is when a person to be arrested is a prisoner who has escaped uh, from a penal establishment or place where he is serving final judgment or is temporarily confined while his case is pending or has escaped while being transferred from one place or one confinement to another. Ito yung tinatawag natin na escapis o tumaka sa bilangguan. So, uh, itong tumaka sa bilangguan ay uh, <clears throat> paano sila tumakas? Nung sila ay, na, nung sa, sila ay nasa kulungan. Katulad ng latest incident, di ba? Sa police station. Or while they are being transferred sa isang confinement to another, tumakas sila. Okay? So this is known as escapist or fugitive of justice. What are the rights of police officers while conducting arrest? There are three rights of police officers while conducting arrest. So first is the right to summon assistance. To summon means to invite. Kaya kung may mga policemen who are uh, conducting uh, arrest, pwede silang magpatulong. Provided, however, na hindi mag-sacrifice ang kaligtasan ng tutulong sa policeman na yan. So, yan ang tinatawag natin na right to summon assistance. Next is, right to break into a building or enclosure. Ang isang policeman, kapag ang hinuhuli niya ay tumakas, pumasok, siya, pumasok sa isang bahay, pinadlak yung bahay na yon, yung policeman, pwede niyang sundan ang tao na yon, sirain niya ang uh, pintuan kung kailangan in order to continue pursuing that person. Or the right to break out from building or enclosure. Ibig sabihin ng break out ay paano kung ang habulan ay nag-start sa bahay? Yung hinahabol, pumunta siya sa lumabas siya and he padlock the door. So the policeman, ang policeman na ngayon ang naikulong sa bahay na yon. So the policeman can destroy the door for him to be liberated and continue pursuing that, pers that uh, person. So ano naman ang rights of persons arrested? So we will be discussing that when we will be going to custodial investigation. What are the crimes that may be committed by a police officer while conducting arrest, whether with or without warrant? So may nakalimutan akong na-discuss dito. <clears throat> In real, ay, sa PowerPoint presentation, tinan ko, baka nandito. Ay, ito pala, ito pala. Nasa dulo pala. Uh, okay. okay. 
So what are the crimes that may be committed by a police officer while, con while conducting arrest? So first is the crime of arbitrary detention through delay in the delivery of arrested person to proper judicial authorities. Now repeat, huh? Anong crime ito? This is a crime of arbitrary detention through delay in the delivery of arrested person to proper judicial authorities. So how shall this be committed? This is committed by a policeman who conducted an arrest. Tapos hindi niya kinasuhan ang taong kanyang nahuli within 12, 18, or 36 hours. 12 hours, kung ang ginawa ng taon na yan ay punishable ng light penalty. 18 hours, kasuhan siya within 18 hours kung ang taong kanyang hinuli ay gumawa ng crime punishable by correctional penalties. And uh, kakasuhan siya within 36 hours kung ang nahuli ay gumawa ng crime punishable by afflictive or capital penalties. So do not forget the 12, 18, 36 hours. So in ulit ko, how shall this crime be committed? The crime of arbitrary detention through delay in the delivery of arrested person to proper judicial authorities is may isang policeman, nagkandak siya ng arrest, hindi niya kinasuhan ang kanyang hinuli within 12, 18, or 36 hours. 12 hours kung ang kanyang hinuli ay uh, gumawa ng crime punishable by light penalty. 18 hours kung correctional penalty. And 36 hours if punishable by afflictive or capital penalties. Let's go to unlawful arrest. <clears throat> unlawful arrest is being committed by any person who in any case other than those authorized by law, ibig sabihin, hindi siya pumasok sa instances of warrantless arrest. O ano ang ginawa ng, ng uh, offender sa, sa premen na unlawful arrest? Hinuli niya ang isang tao at diniliver niya sa uh, police station or sa jail with an intention na kakasuhan niya. So inulit ko, paano tayo magkaroon ng kaso ng unlawful arrest? Hinuli ang isang tao, walang warrant of arrest, hindi naayon sa instances of warrantless arrest, tapos ang purpose ay kakasuhan ng tao na yun. So unlawful arrest yun. Expulsion. In expulsion is Ito ay ginagawa ng mga public officers or employees. Pinipilit nila ang mga tao na palitan ng kanilang residence o malis dito sa Pilipinas. Kaya kung may kapitbahay kang polisman, tapos sabi ng inyong kapitbahay na polisman, alis ka dito. Alis ka dito sa barangay Maliwalo. Punta ka sa Concepcion. So, that is expulsion. Because Ikaw ay pinipilit ng isang policeman na palitan ng inyong residence. So, what happened in this case of Harvey versus Defensor Santiago? Hindi ko lang kung bakit napadpad dito ang kanyang uh, PowerPoint presentation. Ang warrant of arrest kasi, <clears throat> ang nag-i-issue ay judge. Okay? Ang warrant of arrest, ang nag issue ay judge. Judge lang. Yan ang alam natin noon. Judge lang ang pwedeng magpahuli sa ibang tao. Si Miriam Defensor Santiago ay head ng uh, Commission on Immigration and Deportation. Erbit, ha? Si Miriam Defensor Santiago ay head ng Commission on Immigration and Deportation. 
Revolution. Nalaman niya na may dalawang American citizen by the name of uh, Harvey and Sherman, American citizen ang mga ito, na pumunta sa Pagsanhan, Laguna, and they were involved in pedophilia. Pedophiles ang mga yon. Ang ibig sabihin ng pedophiles ay uh, mga tao na mahilig sa mga bata. At hindi lang sila simpleng pedophiles. Bakla pa ang dalawang to. Kaya lalaki na nga sila, mahilig pa sila sa kapwa lalaki. No? So, nung nalaman ni Miriam Defensor Santiago yun, pinahuli niya ang dalawa. So, napakadami naging issue doon. So, if we will be going to the discussion of bail, we will be discussing that. Basta napakadami naging issue doon. But ang isang issue na applicable sa discussion natin ngayon is, ano ba ang, bakit nag-issue ang commissioner ng, uh, uh, ay, yung, yung head ng Commission on Immigration and Deportation ng order of arrest? Di ba dapat judge lang ang nag-issue doon sa warrant of arrest? Sabi ng Supreme Court, maling paniniwala yon. Under the law creating the Philippine Immigration, which is Commonwealth Act 613, binibigyan ng authority ang commissioner o head ng uh, immigration and deportation na magpahuli ng unwanted aliens. So pedophilia and prostitution makes a person unwanted here in the Philippines kung sila ay foreigners. Kaya pwede silang ipahuli ng commissioner ng immigration and deportation. Kaya kung kayo ay tanungin, judge lang ba ang pwedeng mag magpahuli ng isang tao? To tell you, hindi. Pati yung commissioner ng immigration and deportation, meron siyang authority na magpahuli sa mga unwanted aliens under Commonwealth Act 613 or the Philippine Immigration Act of 1940. Let's go to search warrant. <clears throat> so search warrant is an order in writing issued in the name of the people of the Philippines, signed by a judge and directed to a peace officer commanding him to search for personal property described therein and bring it before the court. Ito ang definition ng search warrant. Ano ang requisites ng search warrant? Same thing din sa warrant of arrest. Naiibatang sila sa third requisite. Because the third requisite of warrant of arrest is particularly describing the person to be arrested, but in search warrant, particularly describing the things and place to be searched and seized. So, as I told you a while about, the one who will be determining the existence of probable cause must be the judge personally. O, basahin nga natin yung second uh, paragraph. The probable cause is determined personally by the judge. Upon examination under oath or formation of the complainant and the witnesses he may produce, siya mismo ang mag-examine, mag-conduct ng uh, o magtanong sa uh, complainant at sa kanyang witnesses before issuing of the uh, before the issuance of the search warrant. So let's go to the case of Bache versus Luis. What happened in this case? <clears throat> yung uh, commissioner ng Bureau of Internal Revenue <clears throat> sinulatan niya si Judge si Judge Ruiz sabi ng uh, commissioner ng uh, uh, Internal Revenue 
uh, mukhang may kaso ng isa sampa kami. Pero kailangan namin na mag-apply ng search warrant. Kaya pwede ba kami pupunta sa inyong office, uh, judge, at mag-apply kami ng search warrant? Sabi naman ni judge, ay no problem, punta lang sa office. Uh, and uh, I am going to examine, magtanong-tanong ako sa mga uh, testigo, and afterwards ay i-issue ko ang search warrant kung sa tingin ko ay may sapat na basihan na mag-issue ang uh, search warrant na yan. So, yung mga officers ng uh, internal revenue at ang kanilang uh, testigo, kinabukasan, pinuntahan nila si Judge Luis. Na taon pa ba naman, noong time na yon busy si Judge, hindi niya maharap ang kanyang mga bisita. Kaya sabi ni Judge, ito na ang gawin natin. Kasi busy ako at alam ko din naman na nagmamadali kayo. Ang magtanong-tanong na lang o mag-conduct ng examination sa mga testigo na basis ko sa pag-issue ng search warrant ay ang aking deputy clerk of court. Siya na lang ang, siya na lang ang gagawa ng examination under oath or affirmation to determine kung may probable cause o wala. So, yun ang kailang pinag-usapan at ginawa. So, they did it. After conducting examination by the deputy clerk, tapos na si Judge Ruiz sa kanyang trabaho at sabi niya, o, oh, saan, saan ang result ng investigation mo o oh, interview mo? Sabi ng kanyang tauhan, o, oh, ito. Sabi ni Judge Ruiz, uy, mukhang may basihan na ma-issue ang search warrant. Bin-inisyo na niya o binigay na niya ang search warrant. Pwede ba yon? Sabi ng Supreme Court, hindi pwede yon kasi napakalinaw dito. Sabi ng ating saligang batas, ang probable cause must be determined personally by the judge. Upon examination under oath or affirmation of the complainant and the witnesses he may produce, hindi niya pwedeng ipasa yan sa ibang tao. Okay? So that is the case of Bache versus Ruiz. Ano ang pagkakaiba ng search warrant and warrant of arrest? To tell you, maraming pagkakaiba yan. So, first, okay, let's go to similarity. The warrant of arrest and search warrant, both of them are issued in the name of the people of the Philippines. Both of them are signed by a judge and both of them are directed to a peace officer. Second, both of them must be issued upon the determination of probable cause. And we have discussed that the probable cause must be determined personally by the judge. Personally, after examination of, uh, after, uh, examination of the complainant and the witnesses he may produce. So, let's go now to the distinction, yung pagkakaiba. So, the distinction is, warrant of arrest is intended to arrest a person. While search warrant is intended to search and seize things specified therein. <clears throat> Kaya ang warrant of arrest, intended yan sa tao. Yung search warrant, intended naman yan sa uh, things that are that must be searched and seized. The warrant of arrest remains valid as long as a person stated therein is not arrested. 
wala tayong pakialam kung ilang days ang naglapas. As long as the person indicated therein was not arrested, then the warrant of arrest remains valid. But with respect to search warrant, it is valid only within 10 days from issue. The warrant of arrest may be in possession of the person while conducting arrest. Kaya sa pagkandak ng arrest, hindi kailangan na hawak-hawak ng polisman ang warrant of arrest. But in search warrant, it must be in possession of the police officer while conducting search and seizure. Kaya, kung huhulihin mo ang isang tao at may warrant of arrest, hindi kailangan na hawak-hawak mo yung warrant of arrest. Pero kung mag-conduct ka ng search by virtue of search warrant, kailangan na hawak-hawak mo ang search warrant at ipapakita mo sa taong yan. Who owns a property to be searched. By the way, what is the meaning of search? Search is to look for something. Ano naman ang seizure? Seizure is to get that thing after you have searched for it. Kaya ang dapat na terminology ay search and seizure. Because search, you are going to look, hahanapin mo. And seizure, kukunin mo kung ano ang nahanap mo. Kaya, I repeat, ah, the terminology must be search and seizure. It must not be seizure and seize. I, uh, <laughs> seizure and search. Kasi kung hawak-hawak mo na, bakit mo pa hanapin? So, uh, I repeat, ah, the proper terminology is search and seizure. It is not seizure and search. The warrant of arrest may be executed any time of the day and night. While search warrant as a rule, it must be executed during daytime. Kaya kung huli mong isang tao sa pamamagitan ng warrant of arrest, wala tayong pakialam dyan, maski uh, anong tawag dito? Uh, daytime or nighttime, you can arrest it. But in conducting search, kailangan na the general rule is daytime. Maliban, kung nakalagay sa search na pwedeng gawin during night time. The rule in conducting search and seizure is the same with the rule in conducting arrest. Wherein every arrest must be done by virtue of warrant of arrest, ganyan din sa search. Every search and seizure must be done by virtue of search warrant. That is a general rule. What are the exemptions? Ito. Diba, na-discuss natin kanina na there are three instances of warrantless arrest. In conducting warrantless search, madaming instances. Ang nakalagay sa PowerPoint presentation ay 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5, but to tell you, if you are going to read other books, mas madami pa. So, nandyan yung consented search. Ibig sabihin, kagustuhan ng isang tao na siya ay ma-search. Search incidental to lawful arrest. Ibig sabihin ay uh, naayon sa batas ang paghuli sa kanya, kaya pati ang pagkapkap sa kanya ay naayon din sa batas. Tapos, nandyan yung plain view search. Under the plain view search, if the illegal article is readily seen, kung kitang-kita ang illegal article, pwedeng uh, isis yan, kahit na kung wala siyang uh, uh, search warrant. And search in moving vehicle and custom search. 
And we have some cases in order to explain this warrantless search and seizure. First, people of the Philippines versus uh, Go. <clears throat> so, uh, where did this crime happen? This uh, happened at Calamba, Laguna. May isang informant, pumunta siya sa police station at sabi niya, uh, <clears throat> sa loob ng Flamingo Disco House, may isang uh, tao doon by the name of King Louis who is uh, selling shabu, no, illegal drugs. Sabi pa ng informant, Mag-ingat kayo kay King Louis kasi he is in possession of a firearm. May baril siya. So agad-agad yung policeman pumunta sila sa Flamingo Disco House and they uh, conducted a, an operation known as Operation Bakal. So ang Operation Bakal ay pwedeng pumunta ang mga policeman sa loob ng disco house at magkapkap sila doon. Yun, nalocate nila si uh, King Louis. At napansin nila na may baril nga siya. So, he was immediately arrested. At nalaman nila, ang kanyang totoong pala, pangalan pala ay Louis C. Go. King Louis lang ang kanyang ang tawag sa kanya sa Flamingo House. Ay, Flamingo uh, <clears throat> Disco House na yun. So, nung hinuli siya, Nakiusap siya sa mga polisman na pwedeng punta muna tayo sa aking sasakyan. Sabi ng mga polisman, okay, hindi punta tayo sa inyong sasakyan. So they went. Sabi ng mga polisman, pwede ba namin i-search o halughugin ang inyong sasakyan? Can we conduct search in your, in, inside your car? Pumayag naman si King Louis. Si Louis si to uh, go. So, si Nurch. May nahanap na drug paraphernalia and uh, illegal drugs. Ginamit na laban sa kanya. Ang depensa ni uh, Ruli, ay, uh, ang depensa ni King Louis ay nung sinurch ang aking sasakyan, ang mga polisman who conducted the search, wala naman silang uh, wala naman silang search warrant. Because of that, hindi pwedeng tanggapin yan. Sabi naman ng mga polisman, totoo na wala kaming search warrant, pero ikaw, King Louis, you consented the search. You consented the search. So, pwede bang tanggapin yung nakuha sa kanyang sasakyan laban sa kanya? Sabi ng Supreme Court, yes. Yan ang ibig sabihin ng consented search. So let's go to people of the Philippines versus compassion. There was a barangay captain na chismis lang naman na sa loob daw ng kanyang compound ay meron siyang marijuana plantation. Chismis lang naman. Pero alam nyo naman, ang chismis, no? kahit uh, napakalayo, ay, uh, it is like a bird that flies so, uh, so fast. Nalaman na ngayon ng chief of police, yung chismis niya. So, sabi ni uh, chief of police, uh, sa kanyang mga tauhan, Mag-acting nga kayo na balot vendor at pasukin ninyo ang compound ng ni Barangay Captain Kampasyon. Alamin na nga ninyo kung totoo na uh, meron siyang uh, anong tawag dito? Meron siyang uh, marijuana plantation doon. So they uh, policemen, yun nga, nag-acting sila na balot vendor. They went to the uh, 
compound of uh, Barangay Captain Compassion at nakita nila totoo na meron siyang marijuana plantation. So, pumunta sila kay Chief of Police. Sabi ng policeman, Chief, totoo pala yung chismis. Si Chief of Police, pumunta siya kay Judge. Pero gabi na. Sabi ni Chief of Police, Judge, bigyan mo ako ng search warrant at isearch ko ang uh, compound ni uh, Barangay Captain Kampasyon kasi siya pala ay may marijuana plantation doon. Sabi naman ni Judge, balik ka na lang bukas, gabi na eh. Six o'clock na. Balik ka na lang bukas. At uh, bukas, asikasuhin natin yan kaagad. Yung chief of police, imbes na bumalik kay uh, judge during that day, pumunta siya kasama ang kanyang ibang policeman, pumunta sila sa bahay ni Barangay, Cap uh, Barangay Captain Kampasyon, hinuli yung Barangay Captain, inapprot yung marijuana plantation. Kinasuhan si Barangay uh, Captain Kampasyon ng violation ng Re uh, Republic Act 6425. Wala pa yung 9165. Ang depensa ni uh, Barangay Captain Kampasyon ay nung sinurge ninyo ang aking uh, compound, wala kayong search warrant. Kaya lahat ng ebidensya na nakuha ninyo during that operation, hindi pwedeng gamitin yan laban sa akin. Ano naman ang ano ano naman ang sabi ng mga polisman? Totoo, wala kami search warrant. But may tinatawag tayo na plain view doctrine. Under the plain view doctrine, kung sakaling kami na polisman ay nakakita ng illegal na article o illegal na uh, na bagay, pwede naming uh, katulad ng illegal drugs, marijuana plantation and the like, pwede naming huliin ang tao na yan at i-confiscate ang illegal article na yan. That is a plain view doctrine. Tama ba ang mga polisman? To tell you, tama ang polisman sa pagpaliwanag ng plain view doctrine. Pero yung kaso na yan, hindi siya nag-fall sa plain view doctrine. Bakit? Applicable ang plain view doctrine kung sakaling ang polisman ay hindi nag-exert ng effort at agad-agad ay na-discover ang illegal article. <clears throat> Yung marijuana plantation na yon, nag-exert ba ang mga polisman para malaman yon? To tell you, yes. Kung hindi sana sila nag-exert at by accident ay nalaman nila yon. Like for example, nag-picnic sila sa bahay ni, ang malapit sa bahay ni Barangay Captain Kampasyon. Tapos, bigla nilang, uh, nung naghanap sila ng tubig ay, bubulaga sa kanila ang marijuana plantation by accident na nakita nila yon diyan ang applicability ng plain view doctrine so under the plain view doctrine the search without warrant is justified it is justified kung accidentally or inadvertently ang illegal article na yan ay natuklasan ng mga polisman na hindi sila nag-exert ng effort. In this case, I repeat, nag-exert sila ng effort. Kasi nag-acting pa ang mga ibang polisman na balot vendor makapasok lang sa compound ni Barangay Captain Kampasyon. So, yan ang illustration ng tinatawag natin na plain view search under the plain view doctrine. Let's go to search in moving vehicle or uh, pwede ding sabihin na checkpoint. 
Let's go to the case of people of the Philippines versus Lohu Wing. <clears throat> May isang napinpoint ng mga polisman ng drug law na labas masok dito sa Pilipinas. China, Pilipinas, China, Pilipinas. So, na-trace ng uh, ating kapulisan na may na drug lord yun. He may be involved in, ill in illegal drugs. So, ang ginawa ng ating uh, PNP is uh, gumawa sila ng project at uh, ang kanyang code name ay uh, Oplan Sharon 887. No? So, I repeat ah, ang code name niyan ay Oplan Sharon 887. <clears throat> Napaka-complicated ang operation na ito kasi nag-employ ng PNP ng deep penetrating agent. Ibig sabihin may, may kakampi o uh, police officer na papasok sa grupo ni Lohu Wing. So yun, may isang policeman nagpanggap na walang trabaho, nagpakilala siya kay Lohu Wing. So, uh, nagtiwala naman si Lohu Wing sa taong yan. So, kasakasama niya ang taong yan na nagbabiyahe. Pilipinas, China, Pilipinas, China. Noong nasa Pilipinas siya, nakita ng deep penetrating agent, yung uh, policeman na yan, na ang ginawa ni uh, Lohu Wing at yung mga kasama niya, tinanggal nila yung laman ng tea bags. Ay yung uh, tea. Tapos, pinalitan ng illegal drugs. So, yung tea bags na yon linagay nila sa maliliit na lata. Afterwards, nagbiyahe sila, papunta, uh, linagay nila yung maliliit na lata na yon na kung saan may tea bags, basta loob ng tea bags sa illegal drugs, linagay nila, linagay nila sa bag ni uh, Lohu Wing. During that time kasi, wala pang x-ray sa uh, naiya so nakalusot kumuha sila ng taxi at yun nakontak na ng deep penetrating agent ang PNP sabi ng deep penetrating agent kami ay nasa taxi papunta dito so yung policeman nagkandak na sila ng checkpoint hinarang nila yung taxi kung saan si Lohu Wing at ang deep penetrating agent na huli si Lohu Wing. Sabi ni Lohu Wing, hindi pwedeng gamitin yung illegal drugs na nakanfiscate laban sa akin. Why? Because no ako ay na-search, walang search warrant ang mga polisman. Sabi ng polisman, Pwedeng tama ka. No? Pwedeng tama ka, Lohuing, na wala kaming search warrant. But, you are on board a uh, vehicle nakalagay sa instance ng warrantless search na pwedeng mag-search kahit walang search warrant provided it is you are inside a moving vehicle. Ano ang, sabi, ano ang sabi ng Supreme Court? Tama ang polisman. If the subject is in a moving vehicle, tapos nag-set o hinabol ng uh, polisman o nag-set sila ng checkpoint at dyan nahuli ang tao na yan at dyan siya na-search, pwedeng gamitin ang na-search katulad ng illegal drugs laban sa kanya. Because I repeat, Balik tayo sa basic. That is search in moving vehicle. Let's go to the case of Manalili versus people of the Philippines. Ito naman ay illustration ng tinatawag natin na stop and frisk. Yung tinatawag natin na Operation Kapkap. -Kap. <clears throat> May mga polisman na nagkakandak ng uh, Operation Kapkap. -Kap. Lahat ng mga tao doon ay kinakapkapan nila. 
uh, <clears throat> especially yung uh, yung tao dito uh, yung mga suspicious looking nung palapit ang mga polisman sa isang grupo ng tao biglang tubakbo yung mga tao na yun. so hinabol sila ng polisman so they were tapos may natagpuan na illegal drugs sa kanila pwede bang gamitin ang illegal drugs La, uh, uh, illegal firearm well, uh, uh, it is firearm without license pa lang nakuha sa kanila pwede bang gamitin yan laban sa kanila to tell you yes that is an illustration of stop and freeze wherein common sense naman kung papalapit ka sa isang tao tapos tumakbo ang tao yun ikaw ay polisman tumakbo ang taong yon isang indikasyon nun. Siya ay involved sa isang illegal activity. Yan na naman. What are the crimes that may be committed by a policeman while conducting search? So, to. violation of domicile. Violation of domicile. Itong violation of domicile na ito, it is being committed by a public officer or employee, katulad ng policeman, who shall enter the dwelling o bahay ng ibang tao against the will o hindi kagustuhan ng owner. So, inulit pa, paano kung may kapitbahay kayo, policeman? bigla siyang pumasok sa inyong bahay na, na ayaw ninyo siyang papasokin pero pumasok siya. Okay? That is violation of domicile. Kung private individual ang gumawa noon, ang tawag natin dyan ay illegal trespass to dwelling. This is also committed, violation of domicile is also committed by a policeman who pinayagan siya na pumasok. No? Pinayagan siya na pumasok sa tahanan ng ibang tao. Afterwards, nag-conduct siya ng search o naghalughog siya doon na hindi nagpaalam. That is violation of domicile. And the third instance of committing the crime of violation of domicile is secretly, nakapasok ang polisman sa bahay ng ibang tao. Yan ang tinatawag natin na surreptitiously entered the dwelling. Ang ibig sabihin ng surreptitiously ay secretly pumasok siya sa dwelling ng, is ng ibang tao. Nung nalaman ng owner ng dwelling na yan na may polisman, sabi niya sa polisman, pinalabas niya yung polisman pero ayaw ng polisman na lumbas. So that is a crime of violation of domicile. So there are three ways how to commit the crime of violation of domicile. First, is ayaw ng owner ng bahay na yon pumasok yung, yung uh, public officer or policeman. Second, pinapasok siya, pero nag-conduct siya ng search na hindi nagpaalam. Third is, sekreto siyang nakapasok, tapos nalaman ng owner na may policeman at pinalabas yung policeman, eh, ayaw niyang lumabas. So that is violation of uh, domicile. Next is, search warrant maliciously uh, obtained. In search warrant maliciously obtained, this is being committed by a public officer or employee or policeman na kumuha siya o nag-apply siya ng search warrant na wala siyang sapat na basihan. Pero baka dinoktor niya ang basihan para makonvince lang ang judge na mag-issue ng search warrant. Okay? So that is search warrant maliciously obtained. And next is abuse in the authority of search warrants legally obtained. Ang search warrant na yan, legal ang pagkuha. Obtain means, means kinuha. Ang nakalagay sa search warrant na yan ay in search of opium Ang ginawa ng polisman, kahit na yung 
hindi naman illegal na article ay kinuha niya katulad ng uh, ano bang example ng hindi illegal article uh, katulad ng electric fan katulad ng upuan o uh, pati ang mga yan kinuha ng policeman okay so what is a crime committed by the policeman that is abuse in the authority of search warrants legally obtained and let's go to searching domicile without witnesses paano naman itong searching domicile without witnesses na ito this is being committed by a uh, policeman who are uh, conducting search by virtue of search warrant so nagkakandak sila ng search dahil meron silang search warrant so uh, Ang sabi ng ating batas, in conducting search, dapat na may testigo. At sino ang testigo? Owner ng bahay na yon. Kung walang owner, kahit sino na resident there, provided that he is of sufficient age and discretion, paano kung walang owner, walang resident? There must be at least two witnesses residing sa locality na yon. Ba't ang ginagawa ng policeman natin ay uh, ang kinukuha nilang witness ay yung mga barangay officials. <clears throat> Pero ang nakalagay sa ating batas ay at least two witnesses residing in the same locality. Paano kung wala si owner, wala ang resident, walang witness, tapos nag-search pa ang mga uh, policeman? In this case, they committed the crime of searching domicile without witnesses. Let's go to custodial investigation. Custodial investigation is an act of questioning initiated by law enforcement officers after a person has taken uh, custody or otherwise deprived of his freedom of action in any significant way. Maganda itong definition ng custodial investigation. Pero nabutasan ito sa isang kaso. Kasi custodial investigation, ibig sabihin, hindi. Hinuli ang isang tao na ilagay sa custodia tapos may investigation. Kaya custodial investigation. Ganyan lang naman kasimple. Linagay sa custody. Tinanong. Hindi custodial investigation. O, uh, uh, in other words, ay linagay sa custody, tapos in-investigate, hindi custodial investigation. Ganyan lang kasimple. So, nakakomplicated lang ito. No? Uh, nandito ba yun? Ay, ito. Nakakomplicated lang ang definition ng custodial investigation. Sa isang kaso entitled People of the Philippines versus Marikit. Kasi dito, may apat na magpinsan, pinaglakawan nila at pinatay nila ang isang mag-asawa ng kapitbahay nila, tapos tumakas. Nung nalaman ng polisman at napakadaming nakakita sa kanila, hinanap yung magpinsan na yun, nahanap naman sila. But imbes na huliin, ang sinabi ng mga polisman, Kwentuhan tayo. Uh, so, nagkukwentuhan sila. Ang tanong ng polisman ay, totoo ba na kayo ang kumatay doon? Umamin naman sila. So, sabi ng polisman, dahil umamin kayo, uh, ito nang inyong written confession. Ilagay na natin sa sulat ang pag-amin ninyo. So, that's it. It was placed into uh, conf uh, written confession. So, ginamit na yung written confession na yan laban sa barricade cousins. Sabi ni Judge, Policeman, nung nag-conduct kayo ng custodial investigation, sinabihan niyo ba ang mga magpinsan na ito ng kanilang, ng kanilang uh, uh, rights of custodial investigation? Sabi ng policeman, hindi. 
Sabi ni Judge, hindi, hindi ko tatanggapin to. Sabi naman ng policeman, Judge, tanggapin mo kasi kung tutuusin, walang custodial investigation dyan. There is no custodial investigation kasi hindi namin sila hinuli. Nung natagpuan namin sila, nakipagkwentuhan kami sa kanila. Nung umamin sila, dyan na namin sila hinuli. Alam niyo ang sabi ng Supreme Court? Kung tutuusin, tama ang polisman. Kung tutuusin, tama ang polisman. Kasi napakalinaw ang definition ng custodial investigation na sila ay nailagay sa custody. So, inulit ko, kung tutuusin, tama ang, tama ang polisman, sabi ng Supreme Court. Kasi, hindi sila na ilagay sa kustodiya. Afterwards, investigation was conducted. Kaya walang kustodial investigation kung tutuusin. But, sabi ng, ng uh, Supreme Court, mukhang may mali sa definition ng kustodial investigation kasi kailangan na mag-set tayo ng criteria. Kailan ba natin masasabi na may custodial investigation? Ito dapat ang requisites o criteria. First, the questions being asked are no longer general inquiry. Ang ibig sabihin ng general inquiry ay hindi na yung what is your name? Yung pwede mo bang tanong yung kahit kanin man? What is your cell phone number? What is your... Uh, So those are the uh, requisites of I, those are the uh, general inquiry. Yung pwede mo bang tanungin kahit kanin man? What is your name? How old are you? How young are you? So, hindi na yun ang tinatanong. And next is, the persons being questioned is considered as a suspect in the crime committed. Kaya kung ang question ay kinakonsider mo na suspect ang tao na yan, there is custodial investigation already. Whether arrested or not arrested. No? Whether arrested or not arrested, automatic there is custodial investigation kung ang tanong ay kinakonsider ang tao na yan na suspect in the crime committed. So if you will be asked, what are the requisites of custodial investigation? Ito? The questions being asked are no longer general inquiry and the person uh, being questioned is considered as a suspect in the crime committed. So yung mga tools or eyes of criminal investigation, you are going to discuss it in uh, fundamentals. What are the rights of, person, of a person under custodial investigation? These are enumerated under uh, Section 12, Article 3 of the Constitution. So, uh, I will be giving you five minutes to read and uh, uh, memorize these rights of custodial investigation. Abang kasi kasuin ko lang ang, ang bisita ko, saglit lang, five minutes.
Okay, so that uh, about five minute uh, period is sufficient for you to memorize this. So there are uh, several rights of uh, persons of a person under custodial investigation enumerated under uh, Section 12, Article 3 of the uh, Constitution. So uh, first is the right to be informed of his right to remain silent. The right to have a competent and independent counsel, preferably of his own choice, so on and so forth. Do not worry because these specific rights will be discussed in your subject constitution. And we will be um, uh, we will be uh, setting some or we will be giving some uh, specific examples in uh, or cases in order to explain these uh, custodial uh, rights of persons under custodial investigation. The important is for you to memorize it. No, for the meantime, the important thing for you to do is to memorize it. The act of understanding and having sample uh, cases will be done uh, in your uh, Philippine constitution. Of these rights, there are some that can be waived and there are some that cannot be waived. The right to remain silent uh the right to remain silent and the right to have a competent and independent counsel can be waived Kulang ito, ah. can be waived provided that the waiver is done voluntarily it is done intelligently in the presence of a competent and independent counsel and in writing okay so ito yung uh, uh requisites for a for the right to remain silent and the right to have a competent and independent counsel to be waived <clears throat> report that 7438 is the act defining the certain rights of persons arrested detained and under custodial investigation as well as the duties of the arresting, detaining, and investigating officers. Itong batas na ito, ang implementing law ng Section 12, Article 3 of the Constitution. They, as I told you, the main basis of these rights is the Section 12, Article 3 of the Constitution. And these rights were enforced by Republic 7438. There is peculiar with respect to the rights of persons under custodial investigation. Kasi nakalagay doon na uh, the rights of persons under custodial investigation must be informed to them in the language that they know. Kailangan na sabihin o ipaliwanag daw ang mga rights of persons under custodial investigation sa mga tao in a language or, or dialect that they know. Kaya, bakit kasi napakadaming dialects sa atin, especially sa Pilipinas, as sa buong mundo? So, there are several explanations of, of, uh, of the reasons why we have several dialects, but only one thing is certain. If we are going to read the uh, book of Genesis, uh, chapter 11, verses 1 to 9, we are going to learn that uh, before, persons on earth speak only one language. So I repeat, before, persons on earth speak only one language. But I don't know what is that language. And they uh, settled in a place and they agreed that they are going to build a very beautiful city and a tower that will reach the heaven. 
So when they started building that, and God saw what his men were doing, God was surprised at sabi niya, kung iisa lang ang language or dialects ng mga tao, then they can understand each other and they can do anything that they want to do. So in order to confuse them, binigyan niya sila ng iba't ibang dialects and they scattered them in the different surface of the earth in accordance with their dialects. So that is perhaps the best reason why is it that persons on earth have different dialects. If there are some violations of uh, if there are some violations of laws sa pagkuha ng ebidensya like for example binugbog ang suspect para umamin ganun that ang kanyang pag-amin ay hindi pwedeng gamitin laban sa kanya at yan ang tinatawag natin na the doctrine of the fruit of poisonous tree wherein hindi pwedeng gamitin ang uh, naibidensya ang isang tao sa uh, laban sa isang tao kung illegal ang pagkuha doon so if the evidence is illegally obtained then that cannot be used in any proceeding that is a doctrine of the fruit of poisonous tree so what is the distinction between confession and admission? Confession is the direct acknowledgement of guilt. In confession, sasabi na ako sa na, oo na, sige na, inaamin ko na, ako ang pumatay. Confession yun. Admission, on the other hand, is the indirect acknowledgement of guilt. Sasabi niya, hindi ako, hindi ako ang pumatay, pero sa akin yung baril. The owner of the take note that the uh, that the owner of the uh, murder weapon katulad ng baril na ginamit sa pagpatay sa biktima is presumed to be the perpetrator. So that is admission. So may tinatawag tayo na judicial confessions or admission kung ginawa sa court at may tinatawag din na extrajudicial Ang ibig sabihin ng judicial confession or admission ay umami ng isang tao nandyan si judge in an open court. Kailangan pa bang patunayan ang kanyang pag-amin? Hindi na. Paano kung sa labas ng court umami ng ang, uh, uh, suspect o akusado? Kailangan bang patunayan yun? Yes. But kailang na patunayan muna na nag-comply ang mga policeman in the rights of persons under custodial investigation. So let's go to the case of people of the Philippines versus Larry Mahinay. Ito yung tinatawag natin na expanded Miranda rights. No? Ito yung tinatawag natin na expanded Miranda rights. Kaya kung kayo tanungin, ano bang expanded Miranda rights? It is a Mahinay doctrine. Bakit Mahinay doctrine? Dahil ito ay uh, naayon sa decision ng Supreme Court in a case entitled People of the Philippines versus Mahinay. What happened in this case? May isang uh, may, may isang tauhan isang boy who is sleeping uh, sa and, uh, malapit sa construction ng kanyang amo. They had uh, naginuwan sila kasama ang kanyang mga kaibigan. Kinabukasan may natagpo ang babae, batang babae na namatay at positibo na narik. Hinanap nila si Mahinay kasi akala ng polisman ay baka possible na uh, possible witness si Mahinay 
Yan ang tingin ng mga polisman. But yun lang, nawawala siya. Kaya, imbes na possible witness, ay siya nang naging suspect. Nag-apply ang polisman ng search warrant. Sinurge nila yung, yung room o kwarto ni Mahinay at yun natagpuan yung ibang gamit ng bata doon. So, sigur sigurado na ang mga polisman na si Larry Mahinay nga ang gumawa sa crime na yun. Hinanap nila si Larry, Mah si Larry Mahinay at yun, nahanap naman nila. Ayaw niyang umamin noong una, binugbog siya hanggang sa umamin. So, he executed a written confession. So, after executing a uh, written uh, confession, ay um, yan ang ginamit laban sa kanya. So, sabi ni uh, Larry Mahinay, under the doctrine of the fruit of poisonous tree, dahil illegal ang pagkuha niyo sa, uh, sa ebidensya na yan, ay hindi pwedeng gamitin laban sa akin. So, tama ba si Larry Mahinay? Sabi ng Supreme Court, yes. Yung written confession, hindi pwede gamitin naman sa kanya. Because it was illegally obtained. At ang ginawa ng Supreme Court, dinagdagan pa nila yung rights of persons under custodial investigation na nakalagay sa Section 12, Article 3 of the Constitution, in-expand siya. Kaya tinawag nila na expanded Miranda rights. No? So that is the Mahinay Doctrine. Baka ang tanong nyo sa akin ay, hindi tinanggap yung written confession ni Mahinay. Ibig bang sabihin, lusot si Mahinay sa kaso dahil hindi tinanggap ang written confession. Hindi naman nangangahulugan na automatic lusot siya. Hindi lang tinanggap yung written confession pero may iba pang ebidensya laban sa kanya. So, that can be used as evidence against him in convicting him in the crime of rape with homicide. So, let's go to prosecution. <clears throat> the functions of prosecution is, as I told you a while back, to conduct preliminary investigation to determine the existence of probable cause. Second, to conduct in-case proceeding to determine the validity of arrest. And third is kung ang paghuli sa isang tao ay na, uh, naayon sa batas in in-case proceeding o kung may probable cause sa preliminary investigation, the next job of the prosecution is to uh, file the necessary information in court. That is a third job of the prosecution. So, let's go to probable cause. In ordinary communication, ito ang tinatawag natin na sapat na basihan. This is the second time that we are going to discuss probable cause because in the first place, na-discuss na natin itong probable cause. Na-discuss natin ito in, as a second requirement of warrant of arrest and search warrant. Itong probable cause na ito. So, the probable cause is the existence of sufficient ground to engender a well-founded belief that a crime has been committed and the respondent is probably guilty thereof. As I told you, if probable cause exists, then the respondent should be held for trial. Isa sampa ang uh, information laban sa uh, akusado na yon. Let's go now to the case of Placer versus Villanueva. A very, to tell you itong Placer versus Villanueva is, uh, pwede natin sabihin na complicated case. But it is based in a very simple issue. No? It is based on a very simple issue. This was what happened. <clears throat> Yung uh, 
uh, fiscal ng uh, Butuan City, <clears throat> nag-file sila ng madaming criminal case uh, sa court. No? Kasi from law enforcement, pumunta sa fiscal, si fiscal ay gumawa ng preliminary investigation, nalaman ni fiscal na may probable cause, kaya binigay na niya ang kaso kay court, kay judge. Sabi ni fiscal, judge, issue muna ang warrant of arrest dahil may probable cause. Sabi naman ni judge, ikaw naman fiscal, eh, mag-conduct muna ako ng investigation kasi nakalagay sa na nakalagay sa second requisite ng issuance of warrant of arrest there must be a probable cause to be personally determined by the judge judge ang magdetermine ng probable cause too. before issuing warrant of arrest o tingnan mo yung nangyari sa uh, kaso yung anong kaso kanina na discuss natin in relation in relation sa uh, uh, in relation uh, Ruiz that is in the Ruiz case di ba na ang ginawa ni Judge Ruiz ay uh, uh, pinasa niya sa kanyang tauhan ng pagdetermine ng uh, probable cause for the issuance of uh, uh, for the issuance of search warrant o ano sabi ng Supreme Court walang visa ang search warrant na yan because the search warrant and warrant of arrest must be issued in a prob uh, uh, must be issued after the determination of the probable cause by personally by the judge kaya <laughs> ibig sabihin hindi nagkaintindihan sa kaso ni Placer versus Villanueva na ito hindi nagkaintindihan si na fiscal at si judge sabi ni fiscal issue mo na ang warrant of arrest kasi nalaman ko na may probable cause Ito ang function ng fiscal o prosecutor to conduct preliminary investigation to determine the existence of probable cause. Sabi naman ni judge, eh tignan mo ang requisite ng issuance of warrant of arrest and search warrant. The probable cause must be determined by the judge personally. Ano ang sabi ng Supreme Court? Na-confuse lang kayo, mas lalo si fiscal, na-confuse lang kayo. Kung sabi ni fiscal na mer meron ng probable cause, kaya naisang pa ako ang kaso, tama siya. Kasi yan ang kanyang nambuluan na trabaho. To conduct preliminary investigation, to determine kung may probable cause, at kung may probable cause, isasampan na niya ang kaso sa court. Tama si fiscal doon. Pero ang probable cause sa pag-issue ng warrant of arrest, Iba namang probable cause yun. Yan ay dinidetermine ni judge before the issuance of warrant of arrest or search warrant. So, that's it. <clears throat> ano ang pagkakaiba ng preliminary investigation at in-test proceeding? First, Ang preliminary investigation, it is not summary in nature. Ibig sabihin, hindi siya mabilis na gawin. But in case proceeding, mabilis na gawin yan. It is very summary in nature. Pwedeng seconds, pwedeng minutes. Tapos na ang in case proceeding. Ang tatanungin lang ni, ang tatanungin lang ni uh, prosecutor ay, oh, bakit mo siya hinuli? Uh, fiscal, sabi ni policeman, Uh, kitang kita ko kasi na ginawa niya ang krimen. So in that case, kung uh, sa tingin ni fiscal ay naayon sa batas ang pagkuli sa taong yan, kulong na yan. At magsasampa na si fiscal ng information o kaso laban sa tao na yan. But ang preliminary investigation, hindi siya summary in nature. It can take weeks or months before matatapos ang preliminary, preliminary investigation. The purpose, o ano naman ang purpose ng preliminary investigation? 
The purpose of preliminary investigation is to determine the existence of probable cause. But the purpose of in-case proceeding is to determine the validity of the arrest. Kaya magkaiba sila ng purpose. Ano ang purpose ng preliminary, preliminary investigation? Alamin niya kung may probable, may probable cause. Ano naman ang purpose ng in-case proceeding? Aalamin niya kung naaayon ba sa batas ang pagpuli sa taong yan. Ito ang procedure in conducting preliminary investigation. Nandiyan yung filing of the complaint, dismissal, submission, clarification, issuance, transmita. So, let's go to filing of the complaint. Kung mag-file ng complaint sa prosecutor's office for the prosecutor to conduct preliminary investigation, medyo mahabang usapan to, no? Kung mag-conduct ng uh, 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 kung, kung nag-file ng complaint, <clears throat> ilang kopya ba ang complaint na dapat na isang pa? That must be Kung ilan ang respondents, plus two for the official file. Kaya kung tatlo ang respondents, dadagdagan ng dalawa, five. Kung copies of complaint must be filed. Kailan ba mag-conduct ng preliminary investigation? Ang fiscal ay mag-conduct ng preliminary investigation kung ang imposable penalty ay at least four years two months, and one day imprisonment. I repeat, ah, kung at least four years, two months, and one day imprisonment ang imposable penalty sa krimen na yan, kailangan na mag-conduct si fiscal ng preliminary investigation. Kung nag-isang pa ang complaint, kailangan na ang complaint ay may kasamang affidavit ng complainant at kanyang witnesses and other supporting documents to establish probable cause. <clears throat> Kung naisang pa ang complaint, si Fiscal binibigyan siya ng 10 days in order to uh, dismiss the complaint or to issue subpoena or invitation. So, yung investigating officer, si Fiscal ang tinutukoy ko dito. Binibigyan siya ng 10 days. Anong kailangan na gawin niya sa 10 days na yun? Mag-file uh, within 10 days from the filing of the complaint. Either i-dismiss niya ang complaint kung sa tingin niya ay walang basihan. O mag-issue siya ng sabwena o invitation. At i-invite uh, uh, sabwena at sasabihin niya sa respondent na sagutin mo itong akusasyon laban sa'yo. Okay? Kaya inulit ko ha, na-file yung complaint kay uh, uh, fiscal, ilang kopya ang complaint, kung ilan ang respondents, plus two for the official file. Tapos next is, uh, kailan ba magkakandak ng preliminary investigation? Kung ang imposable penalty ay at least four years, two months, and one day imprisonment, Tapos ano ba ang dapat na naka-attach sa complaint? Affidavit ng uh, complainant and the witnesses he may produce and they other documents to uh, to uh, prove probable cause. So within 10 days, okay, si fiscal o yung investigating officer, uh, he is given uh, 10 days uh, either kung sa tingin niya walang basihan yung complaint, i-dismiss niya yung complaint. Okay? Pero kung sa tingin niya may basihan, sasabihin niya sa uh, respondent na mag-file ng kanyang sagot o answer. So within that 10-day period, okay, another 10-day period, nung Binigyan si respondent, nung binigyan siya ng kopya ng complaint, binibigyan siya ng 10 days. Binibigyan siya ng 10 days na magbigay ng answer. Paano kung hindi siya nagbigay ng answer? In that case, 
ang resolution ni fiscal ay i-base lang niya kung ano ang nakalagay sa complaint. Okay? Paano kung ang sagot naman ni respondent ay counter charge? Nagka problema na kasi sabi ni fiscal, oh B, sagutin mo itong akusasyon ni A, binugbog mo daw siya. Tapos ang sagot ni B ay, anong binugbog? Ako ang binugbog niya. Binaliktad lang niya ang sitwasyon. Okay? So there is already a case of charge counter charge. In that case, si fiscal ay um, uh, pwede na niyang palaya, palayain yung, o pwede niyang sabihin na, okay, uh, laya muna kayo. Okay? Kayo na involved sa charge counter charge, pero kung kailangan kayo sa uh, court o uh, kung uh, uh, kailangan kayo sa hearing ay kailangan na magpakita kayo sa akin o sa court no at ang tawag natin diyan na dokumento ay promise to appear yung kung kailan ba applicable itong tinatawag natin na promise to appear applicable itong promise to appear kung sakaling may kaso ng charge counter charge na naguluhan na si fiscal kung sino ba talaga ang biktima at sino ang ako sa uh, uh, respondent sa dalawang yon, Kasi yun nga sabi ni Fiscal, Uy, uh, B, sagutin mo nga ito. Ako sa siyon ni A, binugbog mo daw siya. Pero sabi ni B, ako ang binugbog niya. Ako ang biktima dito. So kung naguluhan na siya, sasabihin na niya na, okay, ang gawin na lang natin ay uh, for the meantime, mag-cool off muna tayo. Tapos uh, ito na lang, mag-sign na lang kayo sa promise to appear na kung kailangan kayo sa court ay kay ay dapat magpakita kayo ay kung mag, kung kailangan kayo sa prosecutor's office ay dapat na magpakita kayo sa process sa prosecutor's office. No? Yan ang tinatawag natin na charge counter charge. And ang remedy is promise to appear. <clears throat> so um clarification Paano kung nagbigay ng sagot ang respondent? Pero hindi, imbis na nalinawan si investigating officer o yung prosecutor, na-confuse pa siya. Kaya pwede siyang mag-ask ng clarification. Within another 10 days, mag-schedule si prosecutor ng clarification. At ang clarification na yan, kailangan na matapos within... Five days, no? Ang clarification ay kailangan na matapos within five days. At dyan sila mag-usap-usap. In the clarification, bawal mag-debate ang, victim, ang, ang uh, complainant at respondent. Kung may tanong si complainant, sasabihin niya kay fiscal at siya magtatanong. Kung may tanong si respondent, sabihin niya kay fiscal at siya magtatanong. So, ibig sabihin, Bawal ang cross-examination. Bawal na sila-sila ang magtatanong doon. Oo pala, nakalimutan akong sabihin sa inyo. Paano kung imbis na magsagot si, uh, magbigay ng sagot, si respondent ay motion to dismiss ang kanyang, uh, ang kanyang uh, binigay no? na papel? Bawal ang motion to dismiss. In clarification, bawal din ang cross-examination. Kaya kung kayo ay tanungin, what are prohibited? What are prohibitions? Ano-ano ang pinagbabawal sa pagkandak ng preliminary investigation? First, bawal ang pagbigay ng motion to dismiss in best na answer. Second, bawal ang uh, cross-examination during clarification. <clears throat> so, let's go to issuance of resolution. Kaya within 10 days from the termination of the investigation or clarification, mag issue na ng resolution si investigating officer o yung fiscal. So, kung meron na siyang resolution, kung Ang ibig sabihin ng resolution ay 
May probable cause ba? Kung may probable cause, gagawin na yung information ng yung kaso at yung information isasampa na sa court. Pero kung walang probable cause, i-dismiss yung complaint. Hindi yung kaso ah, hindi pa siya kaso. Complaint pa lang siya, i-dismiss yung complaint. So within five days after the resolution, ay itatransmit na ngayon yung record of the case sa investigating officer sa kanyang head. With respect sa uh, fiscal ng city, uh, meron silang head. Especially if it is a chartered city. Ang tawag sa mga fiscal doon ay uh, uh, assistant fiscals at ang fiscal ay yung head nila. With respect sa municipality or uh, hindi chartered uh, cities, sinasubmit nila yan sa provincial fiscal. But I repeat, with respect sa chartered cities, sinasubmit nila yan sa city fiscal. <clears throat> ano ang pagkakaiba ng complaint at information? Baka, baka naguluhan kayo, baka sabi nyo, no, complaint ng complaint, information ng information, hindi natin... Uh, eh, eh, hindi namin naiintindihan yan, no? So, complaint is a sworn written statement charging a person with an offense. Ito ay sinumpang sa laysay na kinakaswa ng isang tao. And it is subscribed by the offended party, peace officer, or other public officers. Sinong gumawa? Policeman? Biktima? O other public officers in charge with the enforcement of the law violated. Complaint ang tawag natin doon. Ano naman ang information? Information is an accusation in writing. Nag-akusa na siya. Sino ang gumawa? Prosecutor. San, san ipa-file ang information na yan? Sa court. To be specific, <clears throat> let's go to the distinctions between the two. First, Similarity. Both of them, the complaint and information, and dapat ang conjunction dyan, no? The complaint and information, both of them are in writing in the name of the people of the Philippines and against all persons who appear responsible for the offense involved. Okay, so this is, uh, anong tawag natin dito? Uh, this is a first uh, similarity, okay? Or this is a similarity between complaint and information. Ano naman ang kanilang pagkakaiba? Complaint is a sworn written statement. Sinong pa ang salaysay? Ang complaint. But ang information, accusation in writing, nag-aakusa na siya. It is already directly accusing. Next. A complaint is subscribed by the offended party, any peace officer, or other public officers charged with the enforcement of the law violated. Sinong gumagawa ng complaint? Biktima? Policeman? Or other officers charged with the enforcement of the law violated? Sino naman ang gumagawa ng information? Si prosecutor. Si prosecutor lang ang gumagawa ng information. Fourth, saan sinasampa ang complaint? Pwedeng isampa ang complaint sa prosecutor's office o pwede siya sa court. Kailan, isampa, kailan ba isasampa ang complaint sa prosecutor's office? When the imposable penalty is at least four years, two months, and one day imprisonment. Isasampa yan sa prosecutor's office. Paano kung ang imposable penalty ay less than four years, two months, and one day imprisonment? Isasampayan sa court. Samantalang ang information, it is only filed in court. It cannot be filed in prosecutor's office kasi ang prosecutor ang gumagawa ng information. That's it. So uh, that is the end of uh, part one of a criminal justice system.
and we will be having a break. Afterwards, I will be presenting part two. No? So uh, thank you and uh, good luck.